Hello, everyone. My name is Robert Geis. Thank you for joining us during these tough times. We, we have a team who have, have spent all year working hard to get to this point. But sadly, during these, these times, things are being done a little differently. But I guess it's a good experience for us all to overcome. Our team consists of seven members coming from three different provinces, Ontario, Alberta, and Saskatchewan. We are a small team, but we have overcome a lot of things this year. That, that we are very proud of. Our herd vision that we've been working towards is our goal is to raise functional, high quality cattle to suit the needs of both the purebred and commercial breeders, while advancing student learning and management. Our goals are to increase our weaning weights. We, have, we, we plan to achieve this through genetic advancements. Also to increase our marketing by building connections to increase sales which we did by going to shows like Acre Bishon and Bull Congress, and also phoning potential buyers. We also plan on improving the, the genetics of our herd through our embryo and AI programs. Moving on to our SWOT analysis, some of our strengths that we had is we had a very, a very successful beef day while overcoming a lot of adversity because of the current situation that we are all in. We also have team members that come from many different backgrounds which, which helps make our team very diverse. Also, we expanded our industry connections within the school and on a personal level. Some of our team's weaknesses this year was that we did have a smaller team as we were all very busy. Along with being busy, we, we, we are a team with a lot of very strong personalities. We also had a smaller sale this March, which was harder to market our bulls and our heifers, but it but it was a good challenge for us to have. Another thing that was one of our weaknesses as mentioned before, is that we did have lower weaning weights. Some of the opportunities we have is our embryo and semen donations, which, help, which helps expand our, our genetics. We also gained very strong marketing skills, marketing our sale during these tough times, which also gained us very good networking opportunities. Some of the threats that our, <clears throat> that our team had was the, the competition within industry. Also battling COVID-19 with social distancing, it made it difficult for us to host our sale. With everything going on in the world, there was also the worry of the markets crashing and the weather is always an issue. Good day, my name is Jessica Gunke and this year I had the pleasure of being the records and herd tracks manager. We will start off with a herd value, and we currently have 37 cow-calf pairs, which makes up the majority of our total herd value at 148,000. Our total herd value is 223,700. Moving on to our herd inventory, as of March 31st, we have 38 cows, 19 heifer calves, 18 bull calves, 13 yearling heifers, one yearling bull, and two herd bulls. This brings our total herd to 91 animals. For our gold analysis, we'll start with the growth of our calves. Our average weaning weight of our bulls was 703 pounds and our heifers was 664 pounds. The industry standard is 43% of the dam's weight, so our average cow weight is 1,632 pounds. So this would bring our standard to 702 pounds. Moving on to our open cows. This year, we had a 5% open rate and this is higher than the industry standard, but we only had two open cows. For our calving season, which started on January 1st and is still in progress, the reason why it took longer is because we had a cow which didn't take to the embryo and took longer to rebreed. We had 76% of our cows calve within the first two cycles, and we plan to have a 63-day breeding season to shorten our calving season. Moving on to our death rate, that is at 8% this year. This is above the 4% industry standard, but we lost, but we had three sets of twins, which evened out our loss. My name is Cody Kurtz, and this year I had the opportunity to be the range and forage manager, as well as the beef day manager. In the summer of 2019, we installed a Sun Dog solar portable watering system on LCP21 and fenced off the water sources in, help, in order to help rejuvenate the environment and increased production by rotational grazing, the portable watering system allows us to utilize. 
We would like to thank North Saskatchewan Watershed Alliance and Alice who helped us provide us with this portable watering system. On to grazing for 2019, we grazed 33 pairs on 320 rented acres from Marvin Little for 152 days from June 1st till October 30th at a rate of $1.35 per head per day. Our total rent for our pairs on that pasture was $6,771.60. We also had two pairs and eight bred heifers. We were grazing on LCP 21 for a total of 116 days from June 1st till September 24th. Since the college owns this land, some of these expenses come from an opportunity cost. The rent for our pairs was $1.20 per head per day with 116 days, which so totals up to $278.40. And for the heifers, this costed us 80 cents per head per day for 116 days, which costed $742.40. Uh, the total on LCP 21 totaled up to $1,020 and 80 cents. Uh, when we add up both of our pasture expenses, our total grazing cost for 2019 for the purebred team was $7,792.40. In the summer of 2020, we made a proposal that our team would try to remain in the same locations as it's very convenient for next year's team and the farm team to work alongside with the herd and to pick out a show string. Our estimated grazing costs for 2020 are $7,800. In mid-March, Lakeland College was informed that we had to change our beef day sale due to COVID-19 and government restrictions on group gatherings. This made us have to switch to an online sale. We worked with, alongside with DLMS and the sales staff in order to make this switch as easy as possible. We sold 13 bulls, which averaged $4,385, six purebred heifers, which averaged $4,268, there's $67. The nine commercial replacement heifers, which averaged $1,542, and the four breads, which averaged $2,050. Our income for the sale was $83,800, and our total expenses were $10,831. Our expenses divided between the catalog, sale pictures, sale videos, hats, and our sales staff. I would like to thank all the buyers across Western Canada and the sales staff who made this sale a success. This will help us expand learning opportunities and knowledge for the future classes because it gives next year's team the chance to continue the purebred section and helps provide them with the supplies and feed for next year's sale animals. And a special thanks to the people on the slide who assisted with Beef Day. We would sincerely like to thank all of our buyers who are listed on the slide. Without their support, we would not be able to make this day possible. Hi, my name is Jenna Wilson. And I've had the pleasure of being the show lead and mixed farm manager this year. In January, our team exhibited two bulls and two heifers at Canadian Bull Congress in Camrose, Alberta. It was an exciting day for our team as OAV Veralta 25G placed second in her class. We enjoyed our time in Camrose as it enabled us to personally connect and expose our animals to a lot of local farmers and ranchers. Our Bull Congress expenses for entries were $634, supplies $15, hotel $240, food $70, and fuel $355. This brought our total expenses to $1,314. We believe exhibiting at Bull Congress was very beneficial for our team as it helped us make new network connections and market our beef day animals. Our team had planned on exhibiting three heifers at the Lakeland College Little Royal Show, but unfortunately due to COVID-19, it was canceled. Come this spring, our herd will have produced an estimated 80 tons of manure. The Beef Mix Farm Committee worked alongside the crop technology students and made a plan to spread all the manure from the beef herds on LC20 as the soil test suggested it would be the best fit.
My name is Deborah Bolton, and I had the opportunity to be this year's public relations manager as well as the health and treatments manager. This year, when it came to marketing and advertising at shows, we utilized end stall cards, end stall signs, stall cards, connections with an industry were built by using a booklet available at each show for producers to sign to be added to our mailing list. Um, at the beginning of the year, I made three goals to achieve, to engage our audience, advertise our beef day sale, and gain a larger following. I believe that I achieved these goals by doing a giveaway at the recommendation of last year's team, hosting the Bull and Heifer sale videos, and even with an online beef day sale, utilization of our social media and our connections within the industry, we had a tremendous success and we are just shy of 1500 likes on Facebook with over 200 new since mid years. But you can like us on Facebook at Lakeland College SMF Purebred Beef Unit. These were our two most engaged posts of the, of the semester. The first being our press release on the new format of our beef day sale due to COVID-19. This reached just over 10,000 people with over 500 engagements and 61 shares. The second being the video of our Lot 20 OAV Lady Holly of Veralta 87G. This reached just under 6,000 people with 462 engagements, 14 shares, and 125 reactions. Moving to health and treatments, semen testing and palpations went very well this year. All the heifers passed their palpation. Semen test was successful with all but one bull passing, one being deferred and being pulled from the sale due to structural issues. For treatments this semester, one calf was treated for a navel infection, one calf was treated after being injured by her dam, three calves were treated after being stepped on, one with a broken leg. This is because in our cold stretch at the beginning of calving season, we were forced to keep more calves than we would prefer in the barn at one time with their cows. And just with the high volume of foot traffic in the barn, um, it was, kind of an unavoidable situation that we handled as best we could. Moving on, one bull stifled and did not recover and one replacement heifer suddenly deceased in early December, we suspect due to choke. Hi, I'm Luke Hagert and I'm this year's nutrition and genetics manager. Starting off with the genetics side of things, recently we have AI'd eight of our heifers and a group of cows. On April 9th, we AI'd eight heifers to Oklahoma and Prowler which was heifer bull semen that was donated. As well as on April 11th, we AI'd 16 cows to President Firebrand and Renovation, as well as we AI'd two cows that had higher birth weights to Oklahoma and Crowler, as well as our red cow got AI'd to the red bull Benelli. On April 21st, we'll be putting in 15 embryos, 10 commercial into 10 commercial cows and five of our own. And we look forward to working with commercial with the goal of one team. And we also appreciate their support in driving our genetic diversity. I would also like to thank our genetic donors. Starting off with our semen donors, Borson Marketing from Olds, Alberta, who has repeatedly supported Lakeland College, as well as two new donors, Shoff Angus Valley from North Dakota and Boss Lake Genetics from Stony Plain, Alberta. And we look forward to working with them in the future as well as our embryo donors, Poplar Meadow from Houston, BC, Lazy MC from Brooks, Alberta, and Brooking Angus from Radville, Saskatchewan, who are all repeat donors and who have donated a generous number of embryos, and we sincerely appreciate their donation. Moving on to the nutrition side of things and starting off with the females and more specifically the heifers. I decided to display my information based on a, day, on a daily basis of what they consumed of each ingredient. If I could draw your attention to the heifer supplement, the 3620 supplement, and the 10%, the reason both are listed as in December, we were feeding the 10%, and with our change in feed company, we moved them onto the 3620 supplement, which is a higher protein supplement at 36%, and that brought our cost per head per day to $1.76. Over to the cow side of things, these cows were fed, fed from the beginning of January through to March 31st. If I could draw your attention to the barley grain side of things, the reason is it's three pounds is that is an average for a whole herd. Based off the idea 
that the, the pre-calving ration did not include any barley. And as they calved, they got moved onto a ration that included barley to hopefully add energy and growth to the new calves. They also received the 3620 supplement as they started feed in January. Previous to that, they were on a grazing program and were receiving mineral. And that brought our cost per head per day to $2.18. Onto the bull side of things, this is very similarly done based off on a daily basis, based off of what they consumed of each ingredient. I'll draw your attention again to their supplement. They received the 10% supplement throughout January or December, and on January they got moved onto the 3812 supplement, which is a 38% supplement, and we feel that that helped with their average daily gain, and they laid down a lot more muscle in the last 90 days. And that brought our cost per head per day to $2.64. At mid-years, I did a nutrient analysis of what I predicted that they would get. And this is what they actually received since December. The ration that they received was 53% dry matter. Of that, 78% was total digestible nutrients. Their energy of maintenance was sitting at 0.85 megacalories per pound. And energy of gain is at 0.56 megacalories per pound. Our protein is up one and a half percent than what I predicted because we use the new supplement that is four times more, contains four times more protein, but we feel it benefited the bulls greatly in the last 90 days and allowed them to gain weight that we otherwise wouldn't have been able to. Our calcium is sitting at 0.62% and our phosphorus was at 0.35%, making our calcium to phosphorus ratio 1.8, which is within a our goal of two. Our dry matter intake as a percent of body weight is sitting at 2.2%. The reason we lowered it from 2.5% is because of the consumption of the bulls. It lowered as we approach beef day. So what we decided to do is lower the total batch size, but still maintain the ingredients needed to meet energy, protein, and nutrient requirements for the bulls. Moving on to the two graphs, one represents what we were feeding on average on as-fed versus a dry matter. Drawing your attention to the as-fed side, you'll notice that our bulls are consuming 59% silage in that ration. If you add hay to that, they're eating 67% of the ration in forage, while our grain is only sitting at 29%. On a dry matter basis, they were consuming 25 pounds of dry matter, and of that, 48.5% of that was barley grain while silage dropped to just over 30%. That is because of the absence of moisture and the fact that it is not included in that. You will also notice on the dry matter basis, the increase in the supplement as it jumps from 4% up to 13.7. It's more prominent on a dry matter basis and you can see how much more of an effect it has. All in all, we are very happy with where the bulls ended up in terms of being a consistent group and our rate of game, we were very happy with. We would like to thank Tom McNeely for helping us achieve our goals. Hi, my name is Haley Fisher, and I had the honor of being this year's finance manager for the Purebred team. When looking at the cost of production on our 13 bulls um, that we sold at Beef Day, we had a profit of just over $2,200 per bull. We spent about $1,400 in feed on each bull calf and dam for the year to get it ready for um, Beef Day. As a purebred operation who holds their own sale, our marketing costs are higher on a per head basis. Overall, our sale bulls, we made a profit of $28,653. As you can see on this breakdown of our annual income, the majority is associated to income from our beef day sale. This year, our cull sales only came to about 60% of what was previously projected as we chose to retain some heifers and sell them as breads next year. Our total income for this fiscal year is $100,449.63. This shows our expenses up to date. With all livestock operations, feed costs are the highest, ex highest expense to look at. And as you can see, we spent just over $27,000, which was only actually about 78% of what was previously projected. From there is our livestock purchases that go along with our embryo contract that we have with the commercial team followed by costs associated with beef day. Our overall expenses came to $88,299.60, which brings us a net income of $12,150.
This is a clear image of our income this year compared to what was previously projected. Our call sales came in lower as we retained some of the heifers for next year's team to sell as breads. Income from our beef day sale came in 10% higher than projected, which we were very pleased with as we sold less bulls this year than what was projected, but we also sold more replacement heifers and thanks to a very successful sale, we were very proud. Last year's team projected us to have a higher mature bull income as they projected us to sell one of our herd bulls, Top Gun. Although this year's team, we decided to not sell him and actually retain him for another year, but to bring back some of the lost income, we decided to rent him to both the commercial and research units for breeding season. This is a breakdown of our expenses compared to what was previously budgeted for. We spent 40% less on our show expenses, 10% less on our vet and medical expenses, and 20% less on our feed than what was previously projected. We spend a lot more on registration than what was previously projected due to some complications this year. So to account for any challenges next year's team may have, we made that budget a little bit higher in hopes to um, solve any of those issues. Our other costs came in higher than previously projected as last year's team didn't include the cost of purchasing a creep feeder that was purchased last spring and used for our bulls over last summer. Overall, we spent 95% of the projected budget for expenses this year. Some of the recommendations that we have for next year's team is to make sure that you build a strong team bond off the start of the year so that it makes for a good first semester. Also to continue and build onto the AI program and maintain a strict calling criteria to improve the herd quality. Also build a strong industry connection and maintain the ones that you have to help with all of your marketing needs. And also, help, and also to help expand the genetic pool to continue using the embryo program. We would like to send out a huge thank you to everyone that has helped us out throughout the year and that has made this year such a, such a success. A huge thank you goes out to New Holland Agriculture, Austin Partington, Josie Van Lent, Jeff Brown, Anthony Robertson, Denise Martin, Peter Wilkinson, and to all of the buyers and the donors that have helped us out so far. If you have any questions, please use the comment form and we will gladly get back to you.